Hello, everybody, and welcome in to After the Game with Todd Leary, brought to you by Indiana Sports Beat Media and live from here at uh, Hoosier Hanks East over off of College Mall Road after Indiana falls to can- number two Kansas, I should say, today, 75-71. Todd Leary, of course, uh, the man here. It was not a game that w- there was a lot to complain about if you're an Indiana fan other than the final score. Todd. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, this is a game that it really could have gone either way. I think both teams played okay. I don't think either team played uh, their best, but they both played good. They were both competitive. Um, you know, you, you're looking at two basketball teams, no matter what Kansas is ranked or what their record is, they're not a team that shoots the ball all that well either from the outside. They, they make their money in the paint and offensive rebounding. And, um, you know, so, so I didn't I wasn't scared of this being a game Indiana got hugely blown out in, um, but but I, I did really enjoy the way that Indiana took the ball to the basket in the first half. Trey Galloway, obviously a career day for him, um, but but you know a career day, but also maybe a, a enlightening day for him to see what his role needs to be. How many games do we have? There's more to life uh, right. than, than not than not being able to drive the right. ball. He and, did, and he did it well. And all he's going to hear about is he's three for his last 22 from the three-point line. And so w- when you're driving the ball to the basket, nobody's going to bring that up. Like, But when you only score three points or five points in a game, um, and those are really the only shots that you take, Like, th- that's what's going to be brought up. But in a game like this, no one's going to talk to him about three-point shooting, even though he did make a couple of them today. Um, you know, it's a game Mbako uh, can really build off of. I really, really enjoyed Mbako at the beginning of the game, taking the ball to the basket. Um, he took McCullers yes. to the basket early in the game and scored on him pretty easily. And that's one of the top defenders in the country. And I think pretty much any analyst will tell you that. Um, that's not a team that you are able to drive against like that. So Mbako getting an early basket, driving it in. Um, there's so many positives. I, I know, hey, I'm, I'm the worst loser, just like just like Kevin and Jordan and everybody over here on the side. Like, I'm with you. I'm a, I'm a terrible loser, too. Um, but but I, I come away from this game feeling pretty confident and pretty good about uh, what we're building and what we're moving towards. And I, I am always going to say I think we – uh, are going to be better off when we can make some shots, when we can make more shots. I think guys are starting to get a little more comfortable. I like seeing Renew out there making a couple shots. Um, I, I think a big difference in this game uh, was um, Kalel Ware missing two three-pointers in the first half. It wasn't necessarily that he missed them. The second one that he took was a bad shot, and Coach Woodson didn't like it, and you could tell he said something to him about it. So in the second half, he never even looked at the basket from the three-point line. And, and that that's that can't happen. Like, we can't play that way. And even though Renew missed a couple after he made two in a row, just the threat of him standing out there shooting them um, has to be there. And, and I thought that in the second half was something – that's something where you um, assistant coaches need to jump in at that point and, and go to a guy like Kalo Ware and say, look, you're, you're still <laughs> – probably percentage-wise our best three-point shooter on the team. You still got to put them up or at least look at the basket out there. Um, and, and and there's just a lot of things I think we can build up off of this game, and and they're mostly positive. I mean, the, some bad turnovers. You know, there were some bad fouls, I think, that we had. But, um, you know, I thought it was refereed pretty evenly. Not getting that rebound is a gigantic difference at the end of the game. We could totally be looking at a different outcome or still be playing in overtime. Um, that's something that just kind of gets shuffled away and you don't think that much about it, but not coming up with that rebound on a missed free throw at the end of the game was, was a big difference in how I think the outcome turned out. Uh, before I forget, uh, it, out there today, we saw a lot of former Hoosiers out there in the house. Saw Christian Watford. I ran, I saw him last night. Uh, uh, Rob, uh, that got it from, uh, just a couple years ago from Lafayette. Rob Fennessy right, yep. was there. Uh, I saw Derek Elston. Uh, I'm trying to think. There's tons uh, of that. Yeah, Lindemann, tons uh, of guys. But also there. some, some hopefully for Hoosier, Hoosier fans, some future, some future Hoosiers. Guys. Yeah, a whole Trent bunch of them. Sisley was there. What a night he had last night. 32 and 10 against Memorial. Yeah. Uh, a huge win for them. And uh, and Coach Nate, uh, they went 66-65, I think. I'm trying to remember. It was a one-point game. It was a one-point game. game, yeah. Jalen Harrelson, uh, Malachi Moreno also there today. So, uh yeah, a lot of uh, guys there, and boy, they almost got to see a win. I thought, 
I thought Indiana had that game. They were playing well. They were not. They were controlling everything. They, I mean, yeah, they Kansas didn't take the lead. I tell what, like what, six or seven minutes to go in yep. the game. And the only thing that had bothered me that I was kept looking at, looking at, was turnovers. Because early on, Indiana was turning the ball over, but it wasn't really hurting them. Uh, early in the second half, I noticed that when Kansas only had 37 points, 10 of those points were off of turnovers uh, at that time. But it I, it didn't really end up being much of a difference. I think the point differential was three. Um, they just – couldn't stop Kansas at the end, basically. Yeah, Kansas well, started – they reversed roles. Indiana shot the ball so well in the first half. As, if as, if as you just well. look at it on paper and you look at two teams that are that are pretty close in score with five minutes to go, and then you look at the rosters and you say they have a team that has fifth and sixth year seniors on their team, and we have a bunch of freshmen and sophomore on sophomores on the floor, you know, you're probably going to give the advantage to them. And, and you know – um, everyone has an opinion, and I respect everyone's opinion. I see the outcoached. I see the too many turnovers. All of those things, um, you know, people's opinions are what they are, and, and I'm, I'm fine with it. I, I love hearing Indiana fans' opinions on things because they, uh, they are strong opinions for one, and, and they kind of swing back and forth uh, pretty heavily uh, one way to another. But but this is a game I, I didn't feel like we were out coached. I didn't feel like we were out played. I didn't feel like we were out hustled. I didn't feel like we were out shot. I mean, I th think we were out. Uh, they just got beat. They were just, a, we played against a team that was a little bit older and more mature. Um, but all of that being said, like they had a chance to win. And the fact that we're not sitting here at halftime, you know, like, like a Baylor team is right now, down by 30 at halftime. Well, the fact that Indiana wasn't down big, like against Auburn or against UConn. And, and they, they had a chance. Now, I hate saying that because I, I sat here with 10 minutes to go in the game. I was thinking to myself, in March, we're not going to – if they lose this game, we're not going to talk about the positives that came out of it. We're, it's just going to be a loss. It's not going to be a, a big-time win, and it's not going to improve our seating or be the difference of getting us off the bubble or whatever it is. Like, that's what this game could have meant to Indiana. So that opportunity is gone. We, we can't do anything about it now. Um, but when you look at what can come out of this, like if, if we're able to play that well offensively, I thought our defense was possibly as good as it's been all Trey year long. Galloway was one of those guys. They, they, they were all rotating very well on defense. We didn't – now, again, we're playing a team that doesn't shoot the ball that well. It's a lot easier to defend when you don't have to extend all the way out and guard 25 feet from the basket. But let, let's just take the positives. But but when you come away from this game for Indiana, um, I think when they go into the Big Ten play, they've got a, you know a few non-conference games to get out of the way before January. But going into the Big Ten play, if they play the way they play tonight, um, they're going to put themselves in a position to win most of the ball games, and, and if not all. And so that that's a super positive. Um, I, I think you know you look at a team like Kansas; um, they're going to be ranked in the top ten at the end of the year. Um, you know, they play in a tough conference also, so they're probably not going to be one, two, or three or whatever, but they're going to be in the top ten. And and that would have been an insanely quality win. Now now you're going to have to do a couple more special things. Uh, you're going to have to win some games on the road. Have you're you're going to have to maybe beat Purdue. You're going to have to, you know, beat Michigan State and Wisconsin and, and do some things that you can't do but uh, th that you haven't provenly done in the past. But – I, there, there are a lot of good things to take. If all you want to do is be mad and complain, um, nothing that we say or any other analyst says is going to change that. Like, you know, and, and generally, I, if someone's going to be complaining, it's me about you, something. You are a complainer. You are a complainer. You know, I'm like going, hey, they, they played well. What are you going to say? Yeah. I mean, you, you, you got minutes. Uh, you know, we had all been questioning Mike Woodson about, you know, why are you doing this rotational about thing? The, yeah, the whole second team well, on the And floor. he was kind of blowing it off and poo-pooing it. But today, at the ver at the half, the first thing I did was look at minutes played because I knew that they were very high. Where Kalel Ware played 19 first half minutes, Gabe Cups played 17, Trey Galloway 18, and Bach and Renew were kind of handcuffed a little bit by fouls. But 
having those three starters played that many minutes, they haven't played that many minutes in a half. And this didn't year. come out in the second half. Kalel Ware didn't come out for one second in the second half. Um, neither did did Cups or or uh, Galloway. So I mean, those guys went the distance uh, in the second half. That's not easy to do. Playing at a high level, every possession is is aggressive defensively. Every possession is a struggle offensively. You're moving the ball. You're playing against a good defensive team. So I mean, that's. There's a, a lot of good things that come out of it, of course. Turn it all around. We didn't win. And so, yeah, that, that stinks. That's that it's hard, it's hard to come away with positives. Uh, but when when you when you are are one of the people that's trying to build a program and build a team, like if you look at the recruits that were there, that atmosphere, like we had we had national television uh, people doing the game today, so not people that are in Assembly Hall a lot, and they just could not stop talking about the atmosphere. That's oh. great from a recruiting standpoint. Indiana um, finally did something right too. They they had the uh, candy stripe sections. Yeah, oh, that it, was cool. It worked. It was cool. That yeah. was one of the first things. I, I got like, the text this morning telling me what color to wear in the sections. Like it was, I was, it was like, cool. Wow, it, it yeah. actually they they got it down, but the atmosphere itself was awesome, and that's saying something when there were no students there. The students are gone on break, so all those yeah. seats that are normally filled by students yeah. were, were filled by people who normally don't get to go to games. And it was a raucous crowd, uh, a great atmosphere, a great environment. It was a great showing for Indiana. They did get to to at least not embarrass themselves. And they did show that they're going to win some games in the Big Ten. It would have been nice to get that win. Uh, there's no doubt because they right. could have. In, in March, it would have been huge. They, big, big time difference. They, they could have had it. Uh, but you hit the nail on the head. They've got a freshman starting at point guard right now who was not expecting to be playing 17 minutes in the first half against Kansas right, today. Right. Uh, and, and that makes a gigantic difference. But he played really well. He didn't score. He didn't do a lot of things that are on the, the stat sheet that, that I usually complain about. But he was playing really good defense. They all were playing really good defense. And I remember noticing Galway. He had a – basically had a stop once on his own uh, along the baseline. And I'm like, damn, he's working. Um, and, and Baco, I, I think we look at today's game and, and what game is that of the year? 10, 11, 12, whatever it is. I think we can look at Mbako right now defensively. Offensively, he's always great. He's always going to be good. He may not put up big numbers, but he's a good offensive player. Defensively, I think is his is a little bit of his struggle. Um, and, and I think he's a much better at this point in the season than where he started. Um, we saw some big time rotations from him today. Um, I, overall, like he, he's not a player, you know, I think the first couple of ball games he came out like at the 15 minute mark uh, and it was all defensive decisions to take him out. And, and that's not the case anymore. And that's a great sign. I, I, he looked insanely confident tonight. That drive he made to the basket to start the game out. I tell you what, when I watched that, that's when I thought, OK, we, we really do have a chance to win uh, if he is if that's his mindset and he has that capability. Um, and he was and, very efficient. He only got to play 11 minutes in the first half, but he scored 11 points. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he got it. He did get a couple of bad fouls. I mean, that's, that's part of the bad part. Hey, Gritty, uh, thank you to you and your dad. Appreciate the comments on there. But, um, you know, there's a ton of positives. I, I hate losing. I don't want to sit here and act like at the end of the day, I'm not going to feel a little disappointed. No, uh, I'm not wearing makeup. It's I a, think we have a contrast thing going yeah, on here. Yeah. With the camera, I'm gonna change the camera <laughs> on. I've noticed that for the last couple of weeks off of this. Um, yeah. We, yeah, D Derek. Yeah, it does suck. We missed a, a big opportunity, and and you know, these opportunities are fun, nationally televised. There's a ton of good games today. You know, if we watch these games all day long, they're gonna keep recapping the games of the day. It's much more fun when they're recapping, talking about Indiana beating Kansas. Um, but it, it didn't happen, so so we just got to move on from it and. You know, be ready to to learn or whatever we can get healthy for these next few games. Like, let's not forget. Like, you can you can take all of the uh, all the comments and everything that you have, but just keep something in mind. Indiana is playing without their what sixth year starting point guard, and and you take that person off the floor for Kansas, then I think. I don't think I don't think they would handle things quite as well as uh, as they did today. And and Indiana was able to be competitive in a game where you took away a player that is very very important to the way you built your team all preseason and all summer long. And you know it stinks because Xavier and, and this Indiana team has dealt with injuries uh, over the last couple of seasons. But 
it is what it is. And that is, that's a reality of the sport. Um, but when you look at it, um, you take, you take the guy, I mean, the ball is probably in Xavier's hands, you know, what, what 30, 40, 40, 50% of the time in Indiana's possessions, like he, he, some people think he dribbles too much, um, but the ball's in his hands a lot. And you take that guy off the floor. Um, it's a big difference in how your offense runs. Trey Galloway, I think we would all agree is playing his best basketball right now. Um, and Baco is playing his best basketball in a very short uh, career so far, but um, Kalel Ware, I was impressed with him today. His numbers were not huge. I think he only had 11 points. Yeah, he didn't score much. But, they did a good job. But on a him. bunch of rebounds. I mean, he's playing against another seven foot two guy. I mean, how many games in a row are we going to do this? But he, he uh, ended up with 11 points. He was three of 12 from the field. Uh, they did a good job. Rebounds. Yeah, he had 15 rebounds, though. Yeah, well, 11 sure points did. and 15 sure rebounds. So, I mean, and he had and a few turnovers playing that, that many possibly, minutes. But, he, he had a couple of baskets he didn't finish because of strength issues, but let's keep all, let's also keep them in mind. He's a true sophomore yep. playing against, you know, Hunter Dickinson, who is got a couple extra years of girth on him. Um, and, and that makes a difference. You know, I think, I think we all know between that age of 19 and, and 23, you can, you can gain a lot of physical strength um, and, and, you know, just maturity. And so that's that's really where the team was. And, and there's a, I honestly think we could go down the list. Anthony Walker came off the bench and gave a, a huge lift for India. I thought he played great. He was very aggressive offensively with what the game plan appeared to be of driving the ball to the basket. That's his game. Um, you know, I, I thought uh, Caleb Banks didn't have his best game. A um, couple of fouls that he had were very crucial fouls. Um but but he was being aggressive, and so you know we'll we'll try to look at the positive side of that. But um, you know overall, th this is a game. Um, this is a game that I think we'll look back on. And hopefully, we will look back on and say Indiana started playing better, and it it started in that Kansas game. We saw a different looking team in that Kansas game, and it carried right over into the Big Ten season because if, Indiana's got a pretty favorable schedule, I think, Jim, to oh, start the Big Ten season. Uh, they can get off to a great start. Now, of course, when you start off with a favorable schedule, you got to grind at the back end of it, and, and that's definitely the case. But if they play like this today, I really think they've got a good chance of, of setting themselves up in that early Big Ten schedule with, with a good record. Welcome in. I'm Jim Coyle and, of course, Todd Leary here at Hoosier Hanks East over off of College Mall Road here in Bloomington and uh, where we are after each game for uh, the postgame show after the game with Todd Leary. And Trey Galloway, you mentioned it already, but a career game, a, a, a game of his life, actually. Yeah. I mean, uh, I know he had some, probably had some great games in high school, but this is a this is a whole nother level. I mean, they needed him, and he showed up. And I kept I sent out a tweet at one point. I'm like, Kansas just keeps ignoring him. He's coming right down the middle of the paint and scoring on them. Well, and he's not. It's not like he's the fastest guy in the world, but he was just finding those scenes. You have to you have to say it worked out, and and because Kansas came away with the win, but you could tell Kansas's game plan was to take away Kalel Ware yep. offensively, and so. Anytime he touched the ball, it was an immediate double team. Um, oh, to yeah. still come away with eleven points is good. You got a seven foot two guy coming to double team you, but but you could tell on those dribble handoffs when Trey Galloway was getting the ball and coming down the lane, they were willing to give up the little runner or the drive all the way to the basket in order to take away that lob pass or the pass off to Khalil Ware. And so that was their game plan. Um, you know, you, you could say it worked well for both teams because Indiana took advantage of what they had, uh, Trey Galloway in, in particular. Um, but but I, I'll tell you something that I really liked. And, and when I read the comments um, about um, the coaching, out coaching and things like that, like whenever one team wins and one team loses, don't you always have to say the team that won? You could uh, that coach like, out coach the it's other like guy. Calling, like, holding it's winning and play. losing. So we have the losing yes. team. We have the losing coach. So you, you can say their coach won in that regard. But so when Woody you look out coached it, uh, Bill Self in the first half. Right. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but but when you look at it, um I I like the adjustments Indiana came out with at halftime. And I don't know how much you pay attention to it, but when they came out, 
Gabe Cups wasn't bringing the ball up the floor. Trey Galloway was bringing the ball up the floor, and they were running a little bit of a different motion. And what that what that was smart, I thought, Jim, was the amount of minutes that Cups had to play, that gives him a little bit of a break. And there was a lot of times throughout this game, I think you saw, especially in that second half, where a different guy brought the ball up the court other than Gabe Cups, and it just allows him – to rest a little bit, catch his breath, and, and not have to bring it up uh, against, you know, one of the best on-ball defenders uh, in the country at the guard position. So um, I, I thought there were some good moves that the coaches made to to allow us to be in a position to play those kinds of minutes with the starters late in the game. And, and you know, all around, um, you know, some, some really good things to take away. Um, get things I think we'll build off of and be better on where we won't we won't have negative comments, um, you know, and we won't have negative thoughts about things after some games because we'll be better and we'll win these games. And, um, you know, I, I really just I, I want to focus. I want Indiana fans to stay positive with these guys. And, and everyone's allowed to be critical. I'm, I'm as critical as anyone. Um, and, and and we're allowed to be that way. We're, we're armchair quarterbacks over here. But um I think at the end of the day, you know, you heard if you if you heard the national television broadcast afterward, you heard Jay Wright, you know, a Hall of Fame coach from Villanova now doing television, talk about Indiana played great. OK, well, that's going to be the group that's sitting up there in March that's talking about and, and they're not on the committee, but the committee watches that stuff, too. And you've got those guys talking about how well Indiana played and. And in a, on a national stage, Indiana didn't embarrass themselves today and, and put themselves, I think, in a, in a pretty good position mentally for, for Clark Kellogg and Jay Wright and those guys of the world. Yeah, there's no Q1, quad one almost. <laughs> yeah, yeah, unfortunately. There's yeah. wins or losses, but yeah. they do remember that stuff. You know, for sure. What, what you're saying, they when they're sitting in those rooms and they're determining the seating and all that, that stuff does come back up. It, now, had this been against anybody else and it was just another game and it was like this, no, it doesn't get mentioned, even if Indiana wins it. But this is not any other game. This yep. was number two Kansas. Um, on CBS. Yep. If this game's on the Big Ten Network, it's not talked about the way exactly. that it that it was today. And, and you know, it's it's a lot like what you'll see with Baylor today in, in Michigan State. I mean, they're down by 30 at halftime, but – How's that possible? It's it, I don't know. It, it's not on CBS. It it'll be written off like later on down the road. Like they'll they'll forget about it because it's not, you know, it's not one of the games that, that's going to stand out. Now for Michigan State, they won't. They'll talk about it all year long because they've really struggled, and this is a huge win for them. So, you know, it's it's just going to stink because I want to watch basketball all day today with some of these great games, and they're going to flip back through the ticker all day long and. It just stinks when you lose early in the day and you have to watch that rest of the day. Uh, Bob says he thinks the team came together and is playing well. I can't read the rest of that. I'm too far <laughs> away. Uh, but the Big Ten is also a little shaky. We heard a stat sitting here right before that Kansas has now won nine straight, straight against, against Big the Ten Big teams. Ten teams. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, that's not great. But That's not great. Yeah, and the Big Ten is not expected to be strong. It's not looking strong right now as a as a whole, but but these teams will get better, every one of them. Just like Indiana's going to get better, Purdue's going to get better, Michigan State's going to get better as they look. They must have got better this week. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, the, the week off, Indiana bouncing back from that horrible performance, embarrassing performance yeah. in Atlanta, but to bounce back like this and play the way they did today, Man, they played, like I keep saying, they played well. They didn't play well enough to win. They made the mistakes that they made, but, again, the turnovers, free throws, got a little aggravating. It's 68%. It's not terrible, but 75% makes a big difference. And, you know, 78%. like – And not to call out anything or anyone in particular, but but when you get your opportunities, um, you have to take advantage of them. And, and C.J. Gunn coming in in this game, I know he's going to look at it um, as if he kind of got a raw deal. And, and you know, I, I live that life too. I kind of feel it. But missing the front end of a one-and-one, one, those are just the opportunities you have to you have to take advantage of. And, you know, Kansas had a freshman guard in there today that hadn't scored a point. Indiana had a 10-point lead, and this kid makes, a, makes his only first shot of the game is a three-pointer in the second half. 
I mean, that's a big opportunity that kid stepped up and, and took advantage of. And, you know, C.J. Gunn came in off the bench. He never got into the rhythm of things right after he missed the front end of a one and one He took a really quick bad shot right after that and then came out immediately. Um, barely played uh, in the first half after that, I don't think. And so, you know, those are just the little things that um, – that these guys will learn from. And, and it, it it's not fun to learn that lesson if you're C.J. Gunn. Um, and I'm sure he looks at it differently than than how the coaching staff will look at it. But I think at the end of the day, if, if he – the argument always is and, – and so let me take C.J. Gunn out of my mouth here and let me, let me not use him as an example. I'll just use a player as an example. When a guy's like him coming in off the bench, you'll use Caleb Banks, Anthony Walker, C.J. Gunn, those guys coming in off the bench, it's going to be uh, um, uh, Gabe Cups when Xavier comes back. You feel like you've got to come in and make an impact and do something right away in order to stay on the floor. Now, when you're playing not Big Ten teams or not a number two Kansas, when you're playing teams like they're going to play the next three games, that's not necessarily the case. Coaches give you a little more time to get acclimated into the game. But in a game like this, you almost feel like you've got to come in and do something instantly. And, and that's the mindset I think that, that C.J. Gunn is, was in in this game. And I think they all kind of were. Caleb Banks had a couple of bad fouls that really hurt. I mean, put him at the free throw line and, and gave him points. Um, you know, that's, that's worse than a turnover. Um, and, and those don't get talked about enough. We talk about the turnovers. We talk about some of those bad things because they stick out. But a bad foul like that where you just give McCullers two free throws, I mean, that was pretty late in the game. And Indiana still had a lead at that point. And I – I know I'm harping on that, and I don't mean it to be towards Caleb in particular, but but that was a big difference. He had four fouls, and he only played 16 minutes. Yeah, and, and, and a couple of them were really bad fouls that put him straight on the free throw line. And so now, now I'm getting into the negative side of it. If you want to go and analyze, I'll, I'll well, tell you this. But you're finding the things but that won and lost the game. And, and I'll tell you this. If, if you go look at a game film, I don't care if it's a win or a loss – you you could nitpick bad things that happen <laughs> throughout the game the whole time. That's why at IU we would when I played we would have rather practiced on the floor than watched game film any day of the week because even in the wins you're out of position you do that you give up a bad foul you just do things that give away points and and man coaches do not like at any level for you to give away points and and you know. I, I'm getting back into the nitpicking side of it, but but overall, overall, everyone I think will learn from the experience in this basketball game today and and feel good about where this Indiana team they, they can't go backwards now, you know. I I think they got good some good things to learn that come out of this game. They just can't go backwards because I think they're in a good positive situation. You're talking, you're right. This is the next game after just getting blasted a week ago. Had the whole week off for finals. And then you and then you come out and you they could have let that sit in and and, and oh they can, that, and, that's not a fun believe me if you think as a player you don't look at where the breaks are and when you have a bunch of practice days like right now there's no school so you could practice a lot like if you come out of this game and, and it's one of those you lose by 30 boy those practices are not fun and, and I had one or two of those weeks and, and they're not a lot of fun. Um, but they're not in that position. Like I think, you know. Plus, Coach Woodson being an NBA guy, um, they practice a little differently. You know, the practices are not grueling like, like maybe they were in the past. Um, but but overall, you know, these guys are these guys are in a good spot. I feel good about where this Indiana team is. To be honest with you, for a team that doesn't shoot the ball well, I feel pretty darn good about where they are. I think they've grown a lot defensively. Also, absolutely, and that's what Mike. Mike Woodson wants a lot because he knows that's going to take that when they get into Big Ten play. Uh, but he also knows he's going to have to have some depth from those guys like Anthony Walker uh, playing at that level as well. McKenzie Abaco missed his first free throw of the year yeah, today. Yeah, uh, They talked about it on TV too. I think he hit 21 23 straight. in a row. 23, 23 in a row. Yeah. 23 Man. in a row. Uh, yeah. I couldn't believe that went down. 16 three point shots by Indiana today. Sounds like a, a about an appropriate number for them to put up. Uh, and a couple of those were chucked up in the last minute or two that wouldn't necessarily be in the flow of the offense. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that was a good that was a good sign. I mean, um, although 
you know, I, I I didn't disagree with Coach Woodson's comment about they'll shoot more when they start making more. Like I, that that's that's a true fact. That's a true statement. Um, but but you know what, Indiana had a game plan today. Uh, it, the game it was plan definitely a different setup. No matter what happens for the rest of the year, if if the magic dust gets sprinkled on them by shooting fairies and they all become better shooters. It's not going to change the game plan of this team, which is to win in the paint. And they've got two guys that, you know, Khalil Ware and Malik Renu did not have their best games of the year, but they had good games. Malik Renu with 13 points, probably not his most efficient. He shot 13 times, um, but he makes a couple of threes, um, you know, didn't get to the free throw line very much. Uh, one of two from the free throw line for Malik. Yeah, I mean, at a, at home, you might think that those calls go a little bit differently. I don't want to get into the refereeing. Like, yeah, it's, I, I don't like blaming a lot it on of complaining that. Complaining about it, but and, I was and, and like, I get it. That's right. what hey, that's what that's what we do. Um, I, it's just not me. Like, I don't I don't like to get involved in that. I don't unless it gets crazy one sided, which this game was not crazy one sided. Um, you know, Indiana was in the bonus super early in the first half. Um, they're they're. McCullers was in foul trouble the whole game. I mean, it, don't overlook the fact, if you want to just talk about Kansas for one second, McCullers picked up his third foul one minute into the second half and his fourth foul with, what, 10 or 11 minutes to go in the game and never came out. I mean, for extended time, he came out for a possession or two, but he stayed in there and played with four fouls. So, you know, from that standpoint, that's where I think a lot of – uh, a lot of Indiana taking advantage of those situations is a positive. You're, you got to look at that uh, as Indiana taking advantage of, of where the game situations left them. 14 fast break points. That sounds like a lot for a game that for a, a game. Uh, what was it? 14. Uh, 14 fast break. Points. Fast break point. Yeah. For, 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 for this a team that game, sometimes this was not an up and down game for, especially when you have a team where sometimes we don't have four fast break points. <laughs> yeah. We'll take that. Uh, but again, they've got to. I say they've got to take care of the ball better, which is true. But part of that credit goes to Kansas. <laughs> they weren't exactly just letting them walk around. With Mark, it. look at Mark's comment. It's difficult to look at next year's likely roster and not be concerned. <laughs> hey, uh, Mark, I have no idea. Hey, Mark, have you ever heard of a thing called the transfer portal? <laughs> we may not have any idea what the team looks like next yeah, year. I and I'm no not idea. making light of you. I, I, I get it. I, I just, I chuckle. Because sometimes uh, it's almost like people look for, like, how in the world can we worry about next year right now? Uh, we got to worry about two weeks from now when, when the Big Ten's rolling around. So and there's only I get one it. Guy Sorry, Mark. I didn't mean to call you out, but I, I but chuckled when I saw your comment. Besides Xavier, there's only one other guy I can think of that. Khalil Ware will not be here. Yeah, he will, he will be in the NBA for that's, sure. That's the only dude. Yeah. I'm like, going, you yeah. know what? Uh, they could be awesome next year. Yeah, they, they, uh, those three guys I read off the list earlier: Trent Sisley, Jalen Harrelson. In, De in December and last year, Marino. in December last year, what is it? December fifteenth, sixteenth, whatever it is. I can assure you, none of us sat here and thought, "Oh, well, we don't need to worry about Trace being gone next year because we'll have Kalel Ware come in and play thirty-nine minutes for us next year in in a game versus Kansas." We you have, we have no idea where that thing is going to end up. And and again, I'm sorry, Mark. I didn't mean to call your name out there i just uh chuckled when i saw that on there but hey a lot of positives a lot of good things come out of this um man it would have been nice to win i'm the first one to say it i'll be the last one to say it uh it hurts um but but i mean there's there's a lot of positives and, and i i'm not i'm not a coach i'm not it's not my livelihood on there so i i can i can look at the positives in a loss and and differently than coaches do and i know that uh each game is going to be different but did mike woodson learn something today from what he did because it was a different lineup style it was a different game uh style of play as well uh, and, and I they think, moved the ball yeah, well I think so I, I think i think he learned that he can trust his guys a lot more um i don't know i think the way the game played out uh, kind of dictated the way it went. Like, I think C.J. Gunn would have played some more minutes had he not missed the front end of a one-on-one and, one and yeah. then taken a bad shot immediately. Like, I don't think Mike Woodson's uh, plan at that point was to put him into play for one and a half or two minutes. 
I think that kind of the situation kind of dictated that. So overall, um, you know, I think he learned he could trust his guys. And I think you heard a lot of them talking about, um, you know, his, his ability to trust a true freshman Gabe Cups at point guard. It's almost don't really have a choice right now in that because of Xavier. But, um, you know, this when, when Xavier comes back, um, the rotations will switch up and change a little bit, and you'll be able to bring Cups in. You'll be able to play the two together. Um, some super positives, I think, will come out of that. Nothing but but good, I think, uh, and, unless um, you're Larry from my golf group. <laughs> Nothing but positives can come out of Xavier Larry. coming back to the lineup. Oh, my God, that's hilarious. <laughs> uh, got some, some peeps stopping by. Jim Gong from the Kelly School. His wife, Jen, you see her all the time uh, on social media. She's a great, uh, a huge fan of Indiana. Uh, so, hello to I them. heard her bitching up a storm about not being able to come today. Uh oh, <laughs> but, well, there but she, it's his she fault. said he was going to be here. She said it's he was his be fault. Here. I know. I so heard there it. you go. I heard it. I saw it. Well, we know who to blame. I'll call her out. Uh, he's, no, I was going to say he's having fun. He brought and he brought Jayhawks with him of all things. Oh, my God. He brought he Get brought Kansas guys with fight. him. No, nah, I'm kidding. They're, uh, they're very very nice guys. Uh, met them last night. Uh, Bloomington was a, a fun town last night. The weather has been great. It's Christmas. I mean, it's hard to Indiana just lost. So I'm not. It, there's there's just still there's no reason to to be down. I know that you don't want to lose. You don't want to lose the game. You want to go into this. This three-game stretch, it would have been a so nice. You want to smash Hunter Dickinson's it. face in when he's coming down the court, playing to the crowd. Boy, but that's he loved that's it. the competition. That's the yep. fun part. Like that's what makes it fun. If you don't, if you don't hate, name. if you don't hate the other team, then then it's not that competitive. You couldn't hear his name when Jeremy Gray was doing <laughs> the intros. Yeah. I'm trying to think at what point. I bet, I, mean, I bet when he shot the air ball. I bet when he shot the air ball. Oh, I'm talking was, about during the pregame intro. Yeah, no, I know. I, but I mean, he didn't get like a word out because they knew that he was the next guy. Yeah. It was like, yeah. All you could see was Jeremy talking. Yeah. But yeah, when he, he shot that air ball, that's man. the fun. That's the fun. But Indiana wasn't in sync. One side was at yeah. air, and the other. Yeah. You could hear ball it on at the TV. same time. <laughs> but you know, I was here already. Uh, but yeah, this team improves greatly between last week and this week. I mean, it's hard to say that that's the same team that we saw. Yeah, uh, yeah. that team gave up a hundred and something points last week. Auburn was out of their mind a little bit. I mean, you're the only one that had the the, the calm reaction of, "Hey, we're not that good." Well, and we don't and, play the we don't play teams like that. Like <laughs> that that game, and and I think like I, I consciously thought of this this during this basketball game was when Indiana led 22 to 10 against Auburn it was kind of flukish. Like we made a bunch of threes. Like it was kind of flukish. That's not really how our team is built at the beginning of this game. When Indiana's up 10, 12, 13 points in the first half did no fluke involved at all. Felt very comfortable and confident of uh, how Indiana was playing. Um, I, I just, I, this was a totally different handle of, of a game where you're up you know that that game with Auburn they were up by 12 at the 15 minute mark and down with at the five minute mark um it, I think the, things will handle a lot different in this game and, and we just don't you don't play any teams in the big 10 that are like Auburn that are just coming at you a million miles an hour well and plus the growth uh that they've shown over that over the last week, the, the the growth that they they've shown coming out of a loss like that, um, Gabe Cops continues to grow. Didn't he, he's not forcing? You'd like to see him score like he did yeah, in right. the last game, right. but he didn't force it. He hit a nice little runner that I don't know where that came from. That yeah. little runner he threw up there, but uh, he's he, he's getting more confident. I mean, he's playing against the number two team today. Yeah, I he's don't... playing against a point guard that every. Every announcer and, and analyst across the country will tell you it is probably the best uh, on-ball defender in the country. And, and you know, Dewan Harris is is a guy that when, when he has the ball in his hands and when he's playing defense, like he dictates a game without scoring a lot. He actually scored tonight. He made a couple of three-pointers. Yeah, he had 12 points in this game tonight. But he's not a guy that he can impact a game without scoring. And and that's a 
I, mean, I, I haven't done my research. I apologize. I don't know if he's a fifth year senior or just a fourth year senior, but I mean, he, he is a, he's a quality guard that every single team in the country would love to have. And Gabe cups did very well against him. I mean, he didn't, didn't outplay him by any means, but he also didn't get destroyed by him either. So yeah, he did. He, he had a bucket. He drove, uh, as Andy was pointing out there. Uh, but he, he just handled himself very well. And to, to do what he did defensively today was a great improvement for him. You could see that Mike sh shrunk the, 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 the rotation the yep, today yep. as well. Obviously, with the points going mostly to the starters, which he had to do because I think he knew that he had to have that kind of well, power and, on the and, floor. But Kansas did the same and thing. We, yeah, and we had guys that were – you played off of – the way the game kind of dictated that you played off of the way the game was going and, and, you know, Mbako would have, the, the minutes would have been even more lopsided if Mbako had gotten in foul trouble. Um, because Hunter Dickinson plays 38 Harris plays 40. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, McCuller played 37 Adams played 36 and 25 to Jackson. So they had five guys play more minutes than Indiana. Yeah, these two teams pretty much mirrored each other. It really came down to the last five or six minutes of the game. You had a team that is much more mature versus a team that is, uh, you know, a little little younger. Um, and, and when you have that scenario, generally the older team is going to win um, unless there's some out, you know, they've got an outstanding circumstance. Somebody makes a bunch of shots or somebody does something. If everything is equal, uh, you know, generally the older, more mature team's going to win, and and that's what happened here tonight, and and that's the way we'll look at it, and um, you know, hopefully we we build off of this. If Indiana goes into the Big Ten, uh, and they got three non-conference games now to to you know work out a few little kinks, if they go into the Big Ten playing like this, I'm going to like. I think we're all going to like the start that Indiana has uh, you know five or six games into the Big Ten season. Well, I think a lot of people are going to like if he keeps with that rotation. Yeah, uh, that rotation. Well, you got to remember, Xavier's coming back. Well, Xavier plus Xavier. It, 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 when, when he comes going back, it's going to change. It's going to change. It's it messes up the whole rotation. It, not, it messes up in a good way, um, but it will change that entire rotation when when you've got Xavier that's going to be in there. They're going to have to find minutes for Gabe Cups, and and I think they will. Other people will have foul trouble. Other people will not rotate on defense or whatever the situation might be. Well, and um, Xavier has had some trouble with fouls himself for sure. But now you'll have a, a more experienced Gabe cups that can come in. And I'm sure what do you have a little more confidence in doing that? Yeah. And these next three games, I'm sure Xavier, you know, probably won't play in any of them just to be as absolute healthy as possible coming into that's the big I, 10 season. But, but in that case, you know, it gives when you've played a game against, you know, you played 37 minutes tonight as Gabe cups against Duan Harris, then you're going to go play the next three games against uh, lesser opponents than Dewan Harris. He's going to gain some confidence in those three games, and he's going to come out of that, I think, heading into the Big Ten season at, at I think, his 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 peak from a confidence level standpoint. And and I think um, I, I think I told you this after he got hurt, and, and I just kind of had this feeling that if Xavier didn't play in that first game or two after he got hurt, he would sit out all of December. And not come back. It, yeah. it 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 wouldn't have made a whole lot of sense, honestly. It would be nice to win this game. Maybe I shouldn't say that. If he if he would have made the difference, if he was going to be close to a hundred percent, maybe to play him today. But it sure feels good to be able to not play him now at all until right. January, and get as much rest as possible because he's prone to injury and and he plays so hard and you know he his career's kind of been. Labeled by injuries. Friend makes a good point. Said there's kinks, some kinks need to be worked out. Uh, they, Finishing fast break baskets. There, there was a couple times. We had, two, uh, we had two today where we dribbled off our foot on one. And Khalil Ware, yeah, just. Yeah. Boy, I was like, oh, my god. Khalil Ware missed one. I think, was it Caleb Banks or what? somebody dribbled Banks. right off their foot? I can't remember who. Yeah, it, it just. It was just and those so, are wide open layups. I mean, yep. that's the given two points. Lost and yeah, points. two different times that, uh, you know, we don't even come away with the basketball. So, yeah, I mean, you look at that, that's a great point you make there, Fred. And, and, and those are big points when it comes down to the end of a game. So now we, uh, Indiana will uh, play these next couple of games. Uh, this basically, these are exhibition games yep. uh, is what they should be. These are don't get hurt games. Um, and then go into Big Ten play, of course. We'll talk about that when we get there. But 
as far as where they are right now before they head into Big Ten play. They're probably in a little bit better shape than I thought that they would be from a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, well, definitely from one week ago. Um, there wasn't a lot to build off of in that last game um, after Auburn. There, there just wasn't anything you can take out of that. And and that happens, you know, it happens to teams all the time. And you've got to just go start over. I mean, your, your next day in practice, you probably start out with defensive slide drills because you basically go back to square one and start over and start building, start building yourself up again. And um, those first few practices after a game like last week are, are miserable for everyone, including the coaches. They don't enjoy that either. They, at this point in the season, they want to be working on, you know, uh, timing and working on guys coming off of screens and coming off of ball screens and rotations and things. So um, it, it's not fun for anyone uh, after a game like that. But I think we all come away from this one feeling – uh, feeling decent about where they are and, and what to look forward to. Now, if they let us down to start the Big Ten season, then I will jump on the bitching train like everybody else <laughs> over here. I'll be mad like everybody else too, but I'm not going to let my rest of my December be that way. It was uh, 21 to 15 on personal fouls called Indiana on the losing end of that. And, and, and uh, at home, at I, home, I, I would like to know the overall stat of how many times Indiana has committed more fouls than the opponents in assembly hall. I, I bet that number's it didn't low. Happen back in your day. I bet that number's low. I, I, pro, I know for a fact I bet that number's it super didn't. low. Um, you guys made made hay off getting to the free throw line. Well, what? we also had a coach that was going to be up somebody's ass as three referees if uh, <laughs> if that number got too one sided. Well, man, we cannot thank you enough as always for being with us here at uh, Hoosier Hanks East over off College Mall Road. Make sure you stop by and uh, say hello. Wish them all, everybody happy holidays as well. Uh, as Christmas is not too far away, a couple more games coming up. So we'll be. Uh, when is the next game? I don't even know. I, I've got to look at the schedule. So much going on right now. Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, it's just flying, man. But uh, we'll be back. And uh, looking forward to do it. I'll be back on Monday morning, of course, with Indiana Sports Beat. Don Fisher will be with me. I'm sure he'll uh, he'll certainly be willing to talk about this. this such a close. He'll have an man. opinion. Uh, well, you know, Don would love to to call one more game like this a win over a team like that in Assembly Hall. How much fun that would be for him. He didn't get to do that today. Nope. Nope. Hopefully he gets that against Purdue. Uh, there's not a lot, of, not a lot, a lot more opportunities for that though. Really, uh, we talked about that earlier. Purdue, one of those. Michigan State, one of those. Uh, maybe Illinois. Illinois um, for sure. Yeah, Illinois is going to be up there when the by the end of the year. We'll we certainly be. find out. Well, again, thank each and every one of you guys. Thanks to Benny here at Hoosier Hanks. Thanks to Todd Leary. And I'm Jim Coyle. Until Monday, I will see you on the radio. Have a great weekend.